So today we're going to talk about this. This is the Canon M50. Now, I bought this back in late September 2020, I think, and I did a whole unboxing video and everything. And since then, it, it has kind of remained my main camera for all sorts of content creation that I do. Now, personally, I bought this because um, I wasn't happy with uh, the quality, the visual quality of the content that I was creating at the time. I was using my phone and though it was an amazing uh, phone, I mean, it is an amazing phone. I, I used the Galaxy S20 Ultra to shoot a lot of my earlier videos. And though the quality of that is quite good, I, I just wasn't personally happy with it. I just wanted something more. I wanted something better. So after researching a whole bunch, I came across the Canon M50. Now, if I've got my facts right, this is Canon's best selling mirrorless camera, but that's not the only thing. It's probably also the camera that right now is being recommended as the best camera for brand new content creators, the best entry level content creation camera. So despite being released back in 2018, it's still relevant today. And after using it as my main camera for over four months now, I can see why. And I can personally say, that I absolutely love this camera. It's an absolute beast of a camera. It's amazing. And even now in 2021, I think, in my opinion, that there are very few cameras that can compete with what this has to offer. So today I'm gonna break down the reasons why this camera, the Canon EOS M50, is such a good camera and why I would still recommend it as the go-to camera for brand new content creators even now in 2021. Before I move on guys, if you do wanna to talk to me more about things like cameras, uh, mics, webcams, any sort of tech, gaming, anime, all the things, then head on over to my Twitch. I stream several times a week and I spend a lot of my time just chatting with my viewers and discussing things like that, um, modern affairs, you know, whatever suits your fancy. So head on over, hit me up with a follow there, don't miss out. And all the links to my social medias are in the description box down below. So get clicking, get following. First, let's talk about design. Now, to begin with the body itself, the M50 has a very small form factor, which basically makes it nice and light and uh, kind of easy to hold and use. The grip on the side, um, this little kind of grippy thing on the side, uh, basically makes it very comfortable to hold, especially while you're taking photos. And especially when you've got a kind of big lens fitted onto it, it does make it much easier to kind of hold the camera and use it. Having this small form factor means that it's amazing to use on the go and um, being so small and weighing in at about 387 grams, it's absolutely perfect for vlogging. It's an amazing vlogging camera. The one thing I do want to mention is that it's not weather sealed, which basically means that you shouldn't use it when the conditions are wet, otherwise you are going to get water in here. Um, but apart from that, amazing camera in terms of size and, uh, and fit in your hand, even for small hands, this camera is perfect. So if you're an inspired vlogger, then this is definitely one of those cameras that you should look into getting. It does have a built-in flash, which is very, very handy. And on top here, it does have a hot shoe mic, which basically means that you can add things like mics, um, larger flash modules, uh, and all sorts of accessories to it uh, with ease. And mentioning mics, uh, one of the main reasons that I picked this over other cameras that were available for maybe a little bit cheaper, and one of the reasons that I think content creators, especially if you're making YouTube videos, should pick this up is because it has an inbuilt uh, mic port here on the side, um, meaning that you can plug in a uh, aux mic and uh, it will uh, let you use the mic input to the camera. And that basically means that you can use directional and shotgun mics with the camera, making the audio of your videos that much better. Remember, one of the most important things about uh, video creation is to also make sure that your audio is on point. The camera has a fully articulated touchscreen LCD monitor, which is uh, this thing that pops out from the back. And by fully articulated, it means basically you can angle it in all sorts of directions like I'm doing here. And uh, you know, th that basically makes it perfect uh, for things like vlogging or uh, recording videos of yourself because you can have it set out with the LCD monitor facing you. You get to see yourself while you're recording your video. And this basically makes it a lot more versatile and easy to use, especially for things like vlogging and YouTube, um, than cameras such as the Canon EOS M200 or the Canon M6 Mark II. The M6 Mark II is a fantastic camera and, and would probably be uh, seen as a kind of an upgrade to the M50. However, the one downside of that camera that I saw when I was researching them is that it did have that flip up screen. Um, and and that kind of got to me because I much prefer having the screen on the side. And that basically means I can fit additional accessories onto the hot shoe mount without the lens, sorry, not the lens, the uh, monitor 
the lens screen, screen, that's the word, without the screen getting in the way. And on top of that, it does have a built-in electronic viewfinder. So if you're a traditionalist and you prefer taking your photos up close and kind of peeking through the viewfinder, it does have a fully electronic digital viewfinder and you can turn that on or off. So if you're not using it, you can keep it off like I do because I just kind of prefer using the LCD screen. And that's an advantage it has over cameras like the M200, which doesn't have the option at all, or the M6 Mark II, uh, where you have to buy the kind of viewfinder separately and then fit it on, uh, which then it takes away the hot shoe mount and you'd have to buy additional accessories if you want to fit a mic and all of that onto it to turn it into a full vlogging kit. Now moving on to the recording capabilities of the camera, which was obviously um, the, the features that attracted me the most uh, for this. And the reason I got it was to record videos. The Canon M50 is a 24.1 megapixel APS-C camera. And what that basically means is that obviously it's got 24.1 megapixels um, in its sensor. However, the APS-C side basically means that this is a crop sensor camera with a sensor size of 22.3 by 14.9. And that adds on an additional 1.6 times crop factor to any image that it takes. Now, to anybody who doesn't know what that means, a full frame camera will basically have a sensor size that is equivalent to the 35 millimeter traditional film frame size um, that you got in kind of olden day cameras. Now, compared to that, an APS-C camera has a cropped sensor, a smaller sensor by whatever crop factor like I mentioned if this one has a 1.6 times crop factor and that basically means it has a smaller sensor size by that crop factor than a full frame camera so you might still be asking so what does that even mean what you know what does the sensor size have to do with anything and what that basically means is that on a full frame camera if you use a 35 millimeter lens that lens on that full frame camera will give you a full focal length of 35 millimeters however if you use a 35 millimeter lens on an APS-C camera that 35 millimeter lens or that 35 millimeter focal length will be reduced by that 1.6 times crop factor. So the 35 millimeter becomes a 56 millimeter image. So when you're taking photos, instead of having the whatever you're looking at within the full frame of your image, you are having it within a frame that's cropped by 1.6 times. I hope that made sense. It can be a little bit confusing, but if you have any questions, then do drop them in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer. Now, in the case of the Canon M50, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Generally, APS-C cameras are cheaper than full frame cameras, much cheaper than full frame cameras, which basically makes them so good value for money. And having that 1.6 times crop factor doesn't really impact you. It just means that you just have to be a little more selective with the kind of lenses that you use and the positioning of your camera when you're taking photos or recording video. The images and videos you record are still of an extremely high quality, maybe as not as amazing as full frame cameras will give you, but that makes sense given the price difference between the two ranges of cameras. Now, another thing is for anybody looking to buy a camera that can shoot in amazing 4K, full frame, high frame rates, then unfortunately, this is not the camera for you. Like I said, obviously it's not a full frame camera, but even then, the 4K on this camera is almost unusable. And I'll get to why that is in a little bit, but um, the reason this camera works for me is because um, what it can do is it can shoot at 1080p, at 24, 30, and 60 FPS, as well as 4K at 24 FPS. And the reason I said that the 4K is unusable is because the 4K on this camera, even though it's at 24 FPS, is cropped by a further 1.6 times, meaning that you know the APS-C sensor is already a crop sensor, and then with the 4K, you get an additional 1.6 times crop, which basically makes uh, the kind of field of view that you're getting even smaller. Meaning that, you know, you have to have the camera quite far back to shoot with 4K. But the other thing is when it is in 4K, it loses the amazing dual pixel autofocus that these cameras have. And again, I'll get to that in a little while. But if you're like me and you're absolutely happy shooting videos at 1080, 24, 30 or 60 FPS, then this is absolutely perfect for you. And generally, most of the time, for especially for small content creators, I wouldn't recommend shooting at 4K. Majority of the monitors people have or screens people have don't play back at 4K. Uh, and it, 4K footage is just harder to render and edit. So just messy, stick to 1080p. It's just easier for now until 4K becomes an absolute norm and everything supports it. Now back to what I mentioned before about the autofocus, this camera does feature a dual pixel autofocus, which many of Canon's newer cameras now do. And that basically means that the autofocusing on this thing is amazing. It's really, really good. Uh, with compatible lenses, you can get really nice, crisp autofocus happening really fast. And that's great, especially if you're on the go and you're vlogging and uh, you know, you're moving the camera around a lot 
uh, or you're moving around a lot in front of the camera, then uh, the dual pixel autofocus kicks in and you know you get very nice crisp video, uh, minimal blur, minimal focus time, and everything just looks better. And the other thing that makes things look good in this camera is the image process. Now this camera was the first of Canon's camera to feature the Digic 8 image process. And that's what allows it to take such good quality photos and record such high quality videos despite it being uh, an APS-C camera. Now, to put that into perspective, it's, it's still the same processor that's featured in later cameras like the M6 Mark II, or even some of the more full-frame cameras like the EOS R and the EOS RP. And those are all fantastic cameras. So meaning that this small guy, which has the same processor as them, still holds its own against such heavy hitters. With that processor, the M50 takes amazing still photos as well, which basically not makes it a good camera for vloggers and YouTubers, but also an amazing camera for entry-level photographers who want to kind of delve into the world of uh, photography using a mirrorless or a DSLR camera. Now, moving on. We all know that regardless of what camera you're using, your pictures, the quality of your pictures and images are heavily impacted by what glass you have in front of it. And by glass, I mean lens. This camera comes with the EFM mounting system, which comes with all of Canon's M series cameras. Now there's a small, but very good range of EFM mount lenses available on the market, both from Canon, like the Canon uh, 22 millimeter F2 lens, uh, F2 pancake lens rather, uh, and from other companies like Sigma, such as the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 lens, I have uh, over here. Now this this is a fantastic lens. I use this kind of on um, all of my uh, YouTube videos and I absolutely love using this lens for my YouTube videos because the focal length that it provides me with is absolutely perfect for the kind of setting, the recording setting that I have in this room. Now that being said, don't sleep on the kit lens because the kit lens that this camera can come with or uh, you have the option of buying it with is the Canon 15 to 45 millimeter f 3.5 to 6.3 stm lens and it's a very good lens to kind of have with you especially if you're going out and about vlogging and stuff because it gives you that variable zoom but what makes the camera so good in terms of its lens capacity is that with the use of a simple adapter you can fit all of canon's huge range of lenses onto it very easily now canon uses a lens mount system called the ef uh, mount and because of canon's long running history as a major kind of photography and camera company um, they have a large range of ef lenses already available in the market variable prices variable qualities and some very very good lenses and you can use all of them on the canon m50 just by adding a simple adapter or if you want to go that extra mile what you can do is you can purchase the speed booster from viltrox which is basically an adapter that turns the canon m50 into an almost full frame camera because what it does is it reduces the uh, focal length by 0.71 times. So what I often do is I use the Canon EF 50 millimeter f1.8 lens or quite commonly known as the nifty 50 lens um, with this camera with a speed booster on it and it basically gives me a kind of focal length of around 56 millimeters which is very close to being full frame and that lets me take amazing full frame equivalent photos and record full frame equivalent videos um, with an APS-C cam. So not being limited to just the EFM lenses is a massive bonus because now you can use that massive range of EF lenses and even EFS lenses if you're using the normal adapter um, on this camera, even though they will have a 1.6 times crop factor, it's not a massive deal breaker. You still have the option of using all of the great range of fantastic lenses that Canon has to offer. When I first bought this, um, there was one thing that I was slightly disappointed by, that soon after I bought it, Canon announced the Canon EOS M50 Mark II. And I was pretty much devastated at the news because I just bought the Mark I, or I just bought this, and then they announced this brand new model for the camera. But after looking into it, um, there's not a whole lot different between this and the Mark II. And the biggest problem was that it wasn't available in the European region. So me being in the UK, wouldn't have been able to get my hand on it anyway. So lucky I got this when I did. Otherwise, I would have made a fool of myself trying to wait for that camera. And even now in February, it's still not available in the UK region. So good thing I got it when I did. Now, one of the major things that actually bugged me about this camera and that I wasn't really happy about when I did get it um, is that it's not built for streaming. And as a streamer myself, that was a huge disappointment. It doesn't have an option for unlimited runtime and 
it doesn't have the ability to output clean HDMI, which are two of the main things that you need while you're streaming. This means that when it's connected to a capture card, um, it will display all the kind of on-screen uh, info that you see on the camera screen uh, or the autofocus box. Now, Canon have the EOS webcam utility app, uh, which you can use with this to stream. However, I'm not very fond of it. The quality that it outputs isn't as high as I personally like it to have. I'm very particular with these things. So, you know, it was a little disappointing to me that this thing didn't have these features. However, there is a workaround that I found and it works. You can stream with this using a capture card. Yes, it's not built for streaming. It just means that you've got an additional cable and a, a few tweaks of the settings that you'll have to do. However, that does limit the camera to being used uh, in manual focus mode only. Now, again, that's not a very big deal breaker because if you're streaming, then you're not gonna be moving around a lot anyway. So having it in manual uh, focus is not the worst thing in the world. And what I'm planning to do is make a tutorial of how to use the Canon EOS M50 for streaming using a capture card easily. Now, Canon does seem to have fixed these problems with the Canon M50 Mark II, which was one of the reasons I was slightly disappointed that I wasn't able to get hold of one because it would have been perfect to have an all for one. However, I do have alternative cameras that I use to stream. So, you know, it doesn't really matter to me that this one can't, it can stay as my dedicated YouTube camera. Now, in terms of price here in the UK, the Canon M50 with the kit lens does retail a brand new at about 650 pounds and used for about 500 pounds. I'm pretty sure that if you are going after the body only, you could get it for even cheaper than that. But like I said, the kit lens is fantastic to use right out of the box. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, even if you were to pick it up with the lens. And I think for all the features that this thing offers, it is fantastic to be able to get it for that kind of a price range, given that you'd have to spend over a thousand pounds on a full frame camera and then even more money on lenses. Now, rather than doing that, what you can do is you can pick up this, uh, maybe even without the kit lens uh, for cheap, and then invest in a couple of good quality lenses like I have uh, with the Sigma 16 millimeter and the Canon 22 millimeter uh, F2 lenses. Now, the other reason why this price is fantastic is because with the announcement and the release of the Canon M50 Mark II, um, in, especially in those regions where the Mark II is available, the prices for this thing have significantly plummeted. Um, so it's probably a good time to pick one of these up now, unless you're really bothered by the lack of streaming capability that this has and just want the easier option of using the Mark II for streaming, then by all means go and spend more and buy the Mark II. So there you have it guys. That's my review of the Canon EOS M50. As you can see, with all the features that it has to offer, it still holds its own, even in 2021, as one of the best cameras available on the market, especially for entry-level photographers, videographers, YouTubers, content creators, streamers, whatever it might be. If you're looking to upgrade from just using your mobile phone uh, to take YouTube videos with, to getting a mirrorless camera, then I would definitely recommend the Canon M50. I absolutely love this camera. You saw in the video of my top tech purchases of 2020 that I named this as my number one purchase. It's absolute fantastic piece of tech. And with that, I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, please make sure you hit that like, subscribe and notification bell down below. It means a lot to me that you guys are watching my videos. Keep an eye out for similar content like this. I've got loads more coming your way. Until next time, everybody, this is Kai24 signing out.